At this point, I think we could all use an example. Here is a simple example of a state update model. Let's say that we have a vehicle in the plane and we know its position and its velocity, but with some uncertainty. Okay, so I've got a, uh, a map and where am I? Oh, oh, I'm right here on the map. At least I think I'm here. And I'm moving in a certain direction. At least I think it is that direction with that velocity. Now, given that estimation for position and velocity, what is a good state update model for this system? And what would the effect of that model be on my uncertainty, on my covariance matrix? So what I'm going to do is take this data and pack all of these random variables into one random vector. Let's call this X. And let's say its components are the X and Y position, and then the uh, horizontal and vertical components of velocity. That is my X and Y speeds. Call those U and V. Now, given this random vector, I have expectations, E of X, and covariance matrix, V of X, respectively. Now, a good state update model would be um, really simple. Let's say I have some change in time, delta t, maybe a minute or an hour or a second, and then I just move my positions forward based on speeds. So if I know my x-coordinate at time t, then my x-coordinate at time t plus delta t is uh, where I'm at, xt, plus the horizontal speed, ut, times delta t. That's a simple update for x. The same equation works for y using the vertical component of the speed. And then let's say that the speeds, the horizontal and vertical speeds, update by some control input. Let's say little u and little v. This gives us an affine state update model. We have this linear transformation, and then, then we have this additional change to the velocity components. Let's call that a, a control or a user input, so I can, I can modify my speed. Think of an aircraft moving through the sky where you're, you're slowly changing its bearing. Okay, now given all that, what is the prediction? Well, this state update model is meant to act on the prediction for what your state is, on the expectation. So the expectation of y is what I get by plugging in the expectation for x into this model. So I get that matrix times e of x plus this constant vector. The covariance matrix v of y is obtained from v of x by uh, multiplication on the left and right by the derivative of f, either regular or transpose on the right. And, oh, look, that derivative is really just built right into the state update model because it is linear plus a constant. So you can see how this update to the covariance matrix mostly keeps things the same, but those off-diagonal terms, those delta t's, wind up implicating uncertainty in the velocity components with uncertainty in the position components. And that's really nice. But is it really useful? I mean, do people really do this in practice? Yes, yes, this is really used in practice. This is used in air traffic control. This is used in self-driving vehicles, in all kinds of tracking and prediction problems. But, but, what we've done isn't the full picture. There's a problem. And the problem with this is the problem of what happens when you have uncertainty and you just keep evolving things over time. As you keep updating your covariance matrix, whatever uncertainty you have likely gets expanded. It grows. You know less and less at each time step about what your state is. So what do we do about that? Well, wait. In a later chapter, we're going to see how to do something called fusion, which is based on getting updated measurements to your state. And this is going to help us control the growth of uncertainty over 
time, but we need we need a little something more before we can do that, and what we need is some more math. <laughs>